my name is Roy Simpson. I'm a professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This is another proof via my proofs and differential calculus series. And in this proof, we're going to do, deal with one of the most popular theorems in first year calculus, that the derivative of x to the nth power is just n times x to the n minus first power. A lot of students kind of work with this in polynomials by saying that, well, if I take the derivative of a, a, a polynomial x to the n power, I can bring down the power and subtract one from the power. So my new exponent, exponent is one less, and my new coefficient is just that power. Now, the uh, if you're in first year calculus and you've just run across this uh, rule, um, we're going to go ahead and prove it two different ways. We're going to prove it first uh, in, for natural numbers, and that would usually be uh, what you would learn first, like early on in differential calculus. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a second half of the proof, which proves it for any rational number or any real number, actually. Um, however, it requires knowledge of using logarithmic differentiation. So um, if you're not to logarithmic differentiation, uh, you can only only pay attention to the first half of the proof. It'll just prove it for all natural numbers. And then um, later on, uh, you can come back to the same exact proof and watch the second half, which will prove it uh, for all real numbers using logarithmic differentiation. Now, the information or what we're going to need to know for the prerequisite knowledge, we're going to have to know limits, of course, and the limit definition of a derivative. All of derivatives, all these shortcuts you learn with derivatives are brought to you by the limit definition of a derivative. You have to know that to be able to do any of these shortcuts. There's also going to be a little bit of um, a binomial expansion that we're going to use within the very first part of the proof. So um, that's going to be necessary there. We won't need it for the second part of the proof. And like I said, the first part has to deal with uh, n being in natural numbers. The second part of the proof will just need to add on logarithmic differentiation. So this is one of those strange kind of uh, proofs where um, because you have two levels of knowledge, um, one being kind of the basic, um, you know, my exponents are natural numbers, and then the other kind where your exponents can be rational numbers or irrational numbers, um, it and because of that split in the proof, this is one of those proofs that I probably would not recommend for an instructor to require on maybe their first pass through an exam. Um, but later on an exam, like a, um, an exam after they've definitely learned logarithmic differentiation, um, because this is easier to prove with logarithmic differentiation. But it's good to see this proof anyway, okay? So let's go ahead and get into it. As with all of our proofs, we uh, go ahead and start with let our function equal x to the n, so what we want to take the derivative of. And remember, I'm noting here that n is in the natural numbers. Well, if this is the case that we want to that we have this function, then the derivative of that function is equal to, and now remember we have two versions of the limit definition for um, derivatives. I'm actually going to use the one where x approaches a finite point rather than h approaching zero. So recall this one is f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. You don't have to use this one, but it actually, to me, is a little bit easier to use. So let's go ahead and plug in these values. Uh, I'll go ahead and use different colors. So um, let's see, that's the limit as x approaches a of plugging in x, I get x to the n. Of course, put a little minus there, and then plug a into our function as well, and we'll get a to the n. And that's all over x minus a. I didn't use the coloring thing there, but you know we'll, we'll do that. Now, the problem here is that this is a very difficult um, expansion. So I'm going to make a claim here in the middle of my proof, and we're going to prove my claim. So this is going to be a proof within a proof. And we'll call this a lemma. Lemmas are usually uh, sub-theorems that help us to prove 
another another proof basically so we're going to need this that x to the n minus a to the n can be factored into x minus a times this big fat ugly quantity x to the n minus 1 plus a times x to the n minus 2 plus a squared you could read the rest okay so we're going to quickly prove that it should be a pretty straightforward proof um, some people think that you have to do this using induction in reality you can actually just expand this using a direct proof and how I'm going to do it is I'm going to start actually with the right hand side and I'm just going to multiply it out and show you that it actually turns into the left hand side so let me write the right hand side down here and I'm going to multiply all this stuff out now I, I want to indicate something here before I multiply all this out that we only have to do this lemma because I'm assuming that you have not learned logarithmic differentiation yet this proof the overall proof that we're doing is easier once you've learned logarithmic differentiation but let's pretend you want to prove it prior to knowing that there is still a way to prove it for the natural numbers and so here I'm just assuming that n is a natural number uh, a natural number exponent so when I multiply this out I'm going to do distribution so I'm going to take this x value and distribute it to each of these terms which basically means that each of the powers will be raised by one on the x's as I distribute all the way through so I'll write that down and you see what we get we get basically higher powers of x on each of the terms and I've stacked them right above each other now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do, uh, do the second distribution I have to erase kind of carefully I'm gonna do the second distribution here and I'll do it in a different color I'll take this negative a and attach it to these each of these terms as well and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack them appropriately by powers of X here so again take this negative a and distribute it all the way through and this is what we get now this is gonna be a little bit difficult for people to see so let me go ahead and highlight what went where because that is going to be uh, an incredibly helpful view I kind of stack these weird but if you if you see when I multiply negative a times this x to the n minus 1 so let me highlight that here so when I multiply it by this x to the n minus 1 it becomes negative a x to the n minus 1 so there it is and now when I do negative a times this next second term a times x to the n minus 2 I'll have a higher power of a so I'll have a negative a squared x to the n minus 2 and so on and so forth so when we go over here if you want to multiply this guy by a negative a you get negative a to the n minus 2 right you're adding 1 to the power so it's negative a to the n minus 2 times x squared that's actually right here and then the next one when you multiply by negative a again highlighting through you get negative a to the n minus 1 right you're adding another power there so that's right here times a single single little x and finally multiplying the last term by negative a you'll get negative a to the nth power you're adding 1 to the power so this is the distribution here and that's our beautiful distribution now what we're going to do is go ahead and add up this is stacked to add right each of these terms are adding together so let's go ahead and add these up I'll draw a little bar here this is a typical business we usually add up so this is going to equal oh, what a colorful screen x to the n and then you see positive a times x to the n minus 1 minus a times x to the n minus 1 so those two cancel in fact all these will cancel all the way down the line until you get to this last one minus a to the nth aha so this is x to the nth minus a to the nth so my claim is true that when I multiply this right hand side together it does turn into x to the nth minus a to the nth that's all I needed for the uh, my the rest of my proof here so going back to this business I could say well this is equal to the limit as x approaches a and I can expand that numerator I'll kind of expand it I'll pause the video and expand it myself and there we go there's that beautiful expansion in the numerator and now you can see these x minus a's will cancel beautifully I'll go ahead and cancel them out in red and now we have a beautiful limit as x approaches a of the stuff that remains there right now of course at this point we have no problems with just using direct substitution because substituting 
in a for x's uh, does not lead to division by zero doesn't lead to domain issues so we can just substitute in a for x so I have a to the n minus 1 will be the first term plus a times a to the n minus 2 whoops minus 2 uh, plus and so on and so forth all the way down to a to the n minus 2 times a plus a to the n minus 1 but if you notice, notice something here that first term is a to the n minus 1 plus if you add the two exponents there right like bases mean add exponents when they multiply that's going to be a to the n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a to the n minus 1 plus a to the n minus 1 and there happens to be well let's see uh, n of these terms how can how do I know there are n of these terms um, because if you count up the number of a's here that's a to the first power all the way up to a to the n minus first power so there's n minus 1 a's there plus 1 that wasn't there so there's actually n total terms so you're you're adding this to itself n times so that means it's n times a to the n minus 1 which is exactly what we wanted to show oops except people are gonna be yelling at me this entire time because I just realized that I did the entire proof and forgot that this business in here and I'll probably in post will clear that out that should have been f prime at a <laughs> sorry about that now here here to laziness that I won't re-record the entire video just for that one little minor mistake um, but that just tells me that f prime of a is equal to n times a to the n minus 1 so therefore f prime of x is equal to n times x to the n minus 1 so that's that's fine enough of a proof for me so that's good to prove for the natural numbers and it only works for the natural numbers because of that expansion we did so now for those who are uh, taking a course and you've already covered logarithmic differentiation let's actually prove it for all real numbers so um, if you know your logarithmic differentiation you know that we're going to go ahead and let y equal x to the n but I'm going to start with a um, a little statement here I'm gonna go ahead and say let y equal x to the n but I'm also gonna say uh, where x is non-zero uh, that's kind of important because uh, inside a logarithm you cannot have z x equal zero so uh, another thing that we'll have to kind of mention here is that uh, because we don't know if x and or y is negative we're gonna say then uh, the absolute value of y should still equal the absolute value of x to the nth power. There's nothing wrong with that. You're just saying if y is equal to x to the n, then their sizes should be the same as well. And by the way, that's the same thing as saying the absolute value of x to the nth power. <clears throat> and now let's go ahead and take the log of both sides. So I'm going to say this implies, and I'll take the natural logarithm of both sides natural log of absolute value of y should equal the natural log of the absolute value of x to the nth power and the reason why you take that natural log of course is to take this exponent and move it in front of the logarithm alright now let's go ahead and take the derivative implicitly of both sides and we happen to know from a previous uh, derivative law that the derivative of the natural log of an absolute value of x is just 1 over the absolute or 1 over x itself so I'm gonna say recall and that's just part of um, usually prove that in implicit differentiation chapters or maybe logarithmic differentiation chapters so that should be okay with you uh, you should have already proven something like that if you're watching this part of the proof so let's go ahead and use that and we'll go ahead and take the derivative of both sides of 1 here so the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of the absolute value of y should equal the derivative with respect to x of n times the natural log of the absolute value of x and of course implicitly differentiating the derivative of a natural logarithm is 1 over the variable on the inside times 
And now we have to take the derivative of y with respect to x. That's using the chain rule. And the other derivative over here, I can uh, pull the n out, and we're just taking the derivative of the natural log of x, which is 1 over x itself. Most people would write this, let me scroll down slightly. Most people would write this as uh, y prime over y is equal to n over x. We're actually, we're actually almost done here, so this is going to be kind of nice. Uh, all I have to do is multiply both sides by y here. So this implies that y prime is equal to n over x times y. And of course, y, our original function, let's scroll up here, our original function y is x to the nth power. So I'm going to replace that function y down here with x to the nth power. So I have n over x times x to the nth powers will cancel and you'll get that y prime is equal to n times x to the n minus 1. Notice I did not uh, need any type of special binomial expansion or anything like that. This is actually pretty awesome. This is a very nice clean proof. Uh, the only assumption I made here is x is non-zero. However, if you scroll up to the top, actually let's just go back to the proof itself. If you go back to the proof itself, if if x were 0, you're taking the derivative of 0. That's just 0 itself. So that's, that's a trivial example.